Okay, so we're going to do this review here of Ragnarok. He's asked me to do a review. He's looking to get a little bit better at 1v1s. Um, a lot of this is going to be uh, kind of high-level stuff, but you can extrapolate some of the things that I'm talking about and apply it to lower-level games. And, and, and if you want to get better at Asian mythology, you can definitely do this kind of thing. If you want to get better at a different video game, you can do this thing there as well. Every single game that has a replay function you if, and you want to get good at it, you should be using that to get better. I wrote a guide like... I don't know, 10 years ago on how to make the jump from 1600 to 1700. And I made this guide because I, I knew that a lot of players were kind of struggling to get into the game. And I was like, there's not enough content here to help. And I made this guide about how to review your, well, how to uh, invest your time efficiently in order to get better at something. And I was talking about a 50-50 kind of time ratio between watching and playing. And all that means is you play the game and then you watch it. 50-50. You have to watch every game you play and you try and learn from it. So first things first, Legit. we see I, I, this is going to be super small. It doesn't matter that much. In fact, it doesn't. It probably doesn't matter at all here considering how this gold mine's placed. But generally Legit. speaking, Prostagma. play around your centaur placement and Legit. hold on to it. But using it early is completely fine. Okay, Prostagma. so villages Prostagma. on wood, villages on food. What's the plan here is the first question for uh for ragnarok he's playing against zeus so he's gonna have to defend against um centaur abuse generally speaking at the start so we're going to think about what do we have to do so the first thing to note here is that the map is tundra so we've got food in our base straight away so we don't want to eat all of this because we're going to be getting picked on by centaur so don't eat all this. Do we? This is perfect from Ragnarok. It's moving out Thank to this you. food nice and early. Really perfect. The only other thing that he possibly could have done, and he might still do, is save this Auroch. We'll see if he does that or not. And he could move forward onto these Auroch uh, over there in the middle of the map. But, I mean, that being said, it might be a little bit too inefficient to do that. He's maybe not going to get to the next age if he does that. And then he might get pushed off that anyways and lose a villager. So that could be a little bit dangerous. We are seeing him grab this orc anyways. It's not that big of a deal. Um, there's a world where there might be just maybe a guaranteed food source at every single one of your kind of directions on Tundra. And you could just walk straight out into the map and be eating this elk instead of these aurochs and save those is one very very risky maybe not not risky but maybe it's okay here for uh for a hades player for players against the the centaurs that you might want to might want to deal with that uh but in general we know we don't care too much about centaur here uh if you go into town center the problem that ragnarok is going to have is there's not much on this town center and the trees are actually quite far away from the town center as well so even if he does go on to this there's a world where if this isn't walled, the well, Santa can just walk in here and push off this tree and it can be really, really tough. And the walls are going up. I like this. So there's a couple of builds I've seen where, um, where you get a lot more villagers on gold. A lot more villagers on gold than, uh, than two. And that way you can get these walls up and you go up just a little bit later and it gets you completely safe because all you really want here from the early game is you want the, the Zeus player to build three centaur and not get any damage done to you. That's what you want. Now, sometimes if you do that build, you might get metagamed and the Zeus player goes straight three town centers. If I see the, if I send a scout in and I see like a ton of early villagers on gold as the Zeus player, um, I'll just go three town center straight away because I realize how much gold you've spent on walls and that there's nothing you can do about it. And I won't build those center. Uh, but it is definitely an option if you're if you're playing against some um, some players who are meta slaves. So I, I say meta slaves in that like they just kind of do whatever what they see. They don't they don't really know what to do. Anyways, we've got the Ajax coming over here. We've got able. This is a perp. This is a great relic here. This is a great relic. Extra ten percent is going to help so much if Hephaestus needs to. If Hephaestus can't get grabbed, even if he does get grabbed, it helps out a lot there as well. Um, so, so, so far, so good. I would pull these villagers back straight away uh, when I see... Uh, well, see We've seen, we seen Athena from Lermontov. So this is actually going to be a very different game than you're prepared for as a, as a Hades player against Zeus. The Zeus player going for a town center here instead of center. Um, so you just have to realize once you see Athena, you have all the advantage here in this game. 
You have all the advantage. You don't need to be defensive anymore. You can come out and get your hunt. You don't have to sit in your base anymore. You can be very, very happy to do all of that when you see Athena. Um, don't have to play defensive. It's it's an even game, except you have Hades. So you have the archers. So you have to think about, okay, what are you going to do? Uh, do you go for archery range? Do you go for military academy? Do you go for stable? Um, on a map like this, now normally I would say that your best bet here if you saw this from the from the Zeus player, would be to go straight to the Heroic Age. Now, if you have the resources to do so, that is. And the fact of the matter is you see Athena, you know you can move forward onto this hunt. So I would have possibly see Athena, move these villages forward, move these villages forward, grab this hunt, and I wouldn't be building these. I wouldn't be building these. I would be going to the Heroic Age. Um, and the reason for that is that... The meta of on the meta in Greek Wars is there's no point in building units. And this is controversial because I see a lot of high level players building units. But the idea is that units take a while to get to get produced, right? Obviously, units take a while to get produced. So we have to know the timings in which they come out. Now, if we look at what Lermontov's doing, do you see him building any units? No. Archery range at six minutes. Six minutes. Now this is, uh, admittedly, this is late for the archery range table to come up. It's late. But you've got at least until, I would say, seven minutes before your opponent can actually push you off food if you have Jason, Ajax, or sorry, Ajax, Chiron, Minotaur against Ajax, Chiron, Minotaur, or, or in this case, Jason, Odysseus, Minotaur. And here's the thing. Lermontov isn't looking to be aggressive here. So if I'm, if I'm, this is, this is, this is the big thing here. If I'm you in a Greek mirror, get onto this hunt much earlier. I like that you've made this attack. The bolt gets taken out. That's good. That's a, Good trade for you, Minotaur, instead of a Heliopolis or a Colossus or something like that. But just be on this hunt earlier. Um, maybe go into this corner here. Do you know about it? Uh, you don't know about it, but you should be aware that there is always going to be... Uh, there should always be uh, Aurochs in the corners of the map. There's always a spawn of Aurochs in the corners of the map on Tundra. Uh, and now you're getting pushed off this. Look, 7 minutes. 7 minutes 25. 7 minutes 25. This would be finished if you came to this earlier. You'd be in the Heroic Age. Curse this. Done. Nothing he can do. And then you go to the Mythic Age. Then you go to the Mythic Age through Hephaestus. And then you're just winning. You're just you're literally just winning. And then you can throw it. Or you, or you can go... Or, or if you feel super safe, like you don't need the curse, you can go Apollo. And then you can throw down a fortress while you go into the Heroic Age. And you can make... Sorry, while you go into the Mythic Age. And you can make Heliopoli. And then you can Underworld, and you can Heliopoli, and you can Earthquake, or you can Plenty Vault, or whatever you want. All of that, th that's, that's my personal take on this matchup, which is why I think this is one of the more boring matchups. Um, and, like, you have a couple of units out, and he's got a couple of units out. But Okay, so, now that that's out of the way, let's talk a little bit about upgrades here. Hand Axe, we talked about this, we talked about this in, uh, in the recent, recent uh, little go-through of Zeus, but... Uh, Greeks, hand axe is only a 7% increase. So I know you have a lot of villages on wood, so you're actually getting a lot of value out of hand axe here, so it makes sense that you're getting it. But the big upgrades you want to get as Greeks, the big ticket upgrades is pickaxe. No pickaxe here is actually really, really bad for you because you could probably have a couple less villages on gold, maybe even two less villages on gold here and be in a similar position. Um, and then having the, then having the pickaxe. Uh, on top of that, if you could have, if you could have gotten bowsaw gear, you should have gotten bowsaw. So what did you buy? Hippocon. Were they were were they were they useful? You've only got one hippocon. So it doesn't. It's not much. But if you could have gotten bowsaw, you should have gotten bowsaw. Essentially, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, obviously, no husbandry, no plow is a is a very very big mistake here. Uh, and uh, one thing you can do as a reminder, just for. Like okay, so so let's 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 think about this. I won't just tell you. Okay, so what what happens to a player when they forget plow? Why do top level players forget plow sometimes? Let's pause. 
Why do why do top level players forget plow sometimes? Um, if I jump over here uh, and I'll turn chat box on. So give us some ideas because they, they, they forget them quite a bit. They forget them quite a bit. They're fighting? Nope, not the answer. Nope. Why do they forget it? I'll give you I'll give you another 10 seconds. They don't have gold. The reason they forget they forget plow is because they the the check to get plow is when they build their first farm. They build their first farm and then they go and click plow and then it goes eh, can't buy it yet and then they forget about it. That's the check. So I assume, I'm going to say, I assume that Ragnarok's here did that. I'm going to assume that he built the farm, he went to get plow, he clicked it, it said no, and he forgot to go back later. Okay, how do we fix this? Well, obviously, we make it a part of our soul to just do this every single, uh, a whole bunch. That's the thing that I do. This is part of my soul. You see it when I play games quite a bit. I'll just drop, like randomly in the late game, like 40 minutes into the game, I'll just randomly check my storehouses, even though I, in, my, in the back of my mind, I know I got in everything, but I'll just randomly click them all because it's just kind of muscle memory. That's stupid. That doesn't make sense. That's not gonna, that's not gonna, that's not gonna help the average Joe, but that's what I did. Um, so one thing you can do is say, well, I don't care. I'm building my farm. I'm gonna cancel production. I'm going to cancel production. I'm going to get plow. Build my farm, cancel production, get plow, get husbandry. That's, that's what you're going to do every single game. And then you're never going to forget it again. Okay, so I think that's a very, very big and important thing to get better at the game is like giving yourself those flags in the game to remind yourself to do something. So if we take a look at this now, Let's actually pause. So there's a fight going on. If we take a look at this, Ragnarok is 90 pop. Lermontov is 100 pop. Both players are housed. I'm not going to talk about... Well, we could talk a little bit about housing. Like, I'll give you a... I'll give you a little... A, a little... Cheat. It's not a cheat method, but it's a way to present a flag. And I don't do this... From, I don't Personally, I don't do this and I should do it. I do it on when I'm full tryharding, but a way to present a flag to yourself saying, I need to build a house, houses and I have a house villager for that. And the flag is, you get your villager, if I jump over to Ragnarok's perspective, I put him in a control group. I put him in a control group. Now nine is not the control group you should use. You could use it as control nine and maybe make it like control, like change the hotkeys a little bit around and maybe make it like control E or something because you really don't need a house find hotkey. So you could make this control E and then you go and hit her head and hit E to uh, to select the villager and then you hit E to build the house. And then you're going to just really iron that in. Now that's actually, I actually like that idea. I might even steal that one, but something you might want to try uh, to just have that flag in your brain. And you can see people like 50 Shades saying, or oh, just don't get housed. And you say, well, I mean, you could say that, but then how many times have you been housed? And I would say, I I've seen games where you have been housed. So maybe it's not good advice. And we continue. Okay, so next next part is, we're, we're taking a fire here and Ragnarok is retreating. At what point does Zeus beat... Hades, in this matchup, in this specific situation, the answer is never. Hades has no... like. If you're 100% equal with your opponent, you simply just win with Hades. So you can actually get away with doing nothing here. And the reason you win is Aphrodite... You might want to go Apollo in this matchup, but Aphrodite giving yourself Divine Blood... Um... Your archers are stronger, so your late game dream of tower, wall, toxodi, um, tower, wall, toxodi, Petropolis is better because your toxodis are simply stronger. Your buildings are stronger. Everything late game is better for the Hades. So the Zeus player needs to get an advantage to beat the Hades player. So you don't need to move forward uh, very often here. Uh, and okay. But now we're in a situation here where... The actual fight is heavily favoring Ragnaroks because he's got uh, medium Hippocon. Uh, and we're on our second gold mine out here. So kind of have to fight this. It's still going to be fairly even. This is good micro getting your Hippocon over here. However, oh, uh, however, 
Your tox earlier is going to be sad. Okay. Restoration. This is small, but you never want to click restoration. You never want to be the one to be forced to click restoration in the restoration war. Restoration first, restoration second. The second one is always going to be better. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Um, and don't click restoration until anything else happens. Um, we can talk a little bit about these farms. These farms are great. This farm here, here. So it's a, it's a lot to be consistent on that. I'm never consistent on that myself. Um, and, and you do win this fight because you're Hades. You're getting all those shades. So that was a big mistake for a Lermontov to actually make that push there in that situation because he's now giving you a lot of free units and now you have actually have a slight edge if you had economic upgrades. We check the post game out quickly. You'll see that the difference in resources. You're in front, actually. Why are you in front? No plow for either player, lol. Um, that's wild. I, I can't fully explain why you're in front, but clearly just better better economic management. Maybe, uh, wait, maybe Lermontov's villagers situation got got a little bit of pain in it. Elements of slight, almost very, very equal. It's like we've just been in front for just this moment here. So here you were in front and then we got housed. So you actually had a, like, you were actually winning up until this point, then you got housed. And then that's why your villagers got behind and that's why Lermontov is, is winning there now. But. Anyways, random Pegasus from Lermontov is going to want to Apollo you. This is a, this is, okay, you can use this as a bit of a giveaway. Unless your opponent has got uh, the relic, which he doesn't. If this is just a stray Pegasus, you can basically guarantee that he's going to Apollo you. So you have to do something about that. Um, now, if you're in this situation at full popular, okay, here's, here's something, here's something big. Here's something big. Never go full population in the classical age. Always stop your units a little bit beforehand. And this is this is maybe counterintuitive, but the reason is that when you're at full population, these villagers are at 99%. You're not training villagers anymore. So you're not getting more economy going. And that's really, really bad. And this is something that personally, I don't do enough of, and I know about it, but I'm telling you, and now you can be better. You don't need full population. You need more economy. And then when the fighting happens, if you start fighting, then you start your units again. You can even pull back and be like, okay, he's trying to force a fight. Let me pull back. Or I'm trying to force a fight. I'm going to start my training again. This goes for all gods in, in the classical age. Or even if it's like basically until you're full pop villagers, you don't want to be full population. So you can stop that at like 120 pop, 125 pop. If, if you have five pop there, free to build five more villages, that's that's huge. If you if you just stick in two more Hippocon, that's that's really bad because those Hippocon aren't going to help too much. In fact, if you... Here's something even more bonkers. I'm going to unpause. If you get into this situation where you're at 130, 130 population with 99%, 99% villages here, delete a unit. Delete a unit. It's real good. So Aphrodite, I, I do like the Aphrodite here in this matchup. It does give you the bigger chance of winning the late game, but you do have to remember that Apollo Underworld is the, is kind of the win condition now for the Zeus player because Apollo is going to be able to take your town center and even with your Aphrodite advantage, it's not quite enough. Uh, and we are seeing Lermontov grabbing this town center. We don't care too much about that. You, sh I, 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 you, Given the strategy here, you probably shouldn't have allowed this. You probably should have had something over here. Um, but, I mean, end of the day, if he takes this talent center, it's actually a mistake by him. He should be going Mythic Age here. He's getting himself Masons. He's getting himself the third talent center. He is throwing up a market now. But you should hit Mythic Age first. You should have the in the initiative here to take this talent center down. And that's that should be what you're doing. You shouldn't... You could, you could curse here and then retreat. Or, or fight, I guess, is fine. But you should definitely be going Mythic Age here. Uh, that's great. Okay, you now got Plow and Pickaxe. Okay. 
So at this point, the only thing you're really missing is Bosaur. And you win this fight really hard. He shouldn't be fighting this. You've also got uh, Toxody advantage with the damage. 8.4 against 7.15, which is huge. He does have defender's advantage. But, I mean, I would stay here and fight this all day, every day. And this is going to give you a huge, huge advantage. Um, the only problem is, stop building units. Don't get this. No, 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 no. All right. All right. So, this upgrade gives you... Thank you so much for the Prime Kiera. Eight months. Appreciate you, my friend. So this unit, this this upgrade here is not as good as you think. It's 10% Archer hit points, 10% pierce damage. If we take a look at what the actual base stats of a Toxody are, you're getting yourself 6 HP. You're getting yourself point, wait, what is it? 0.7 pierce damage. And you're spending 600 resources on it. I'm not saying never get it. I'm saying that this upgrade is not the one to get. You get this upgrade, especially in a two versus three talent center situation. Especially in that situation. Yes, it costs another 100 wood, 100 uh, gold, but it's so much better. It's so much better. Um, that's, that's my opinion, uh, especially in this situation. But Artemis... Ah! Take it or leave it. I don't mind. I, I think I think Artemis is getting yourself into a bit of a strange late game situation. I think the Hephaestus essentially guarantees you to take this town center down and for you to win the game. Um, you can see that he a, a strong player will get Masons, will put archery ranges around here. And if you go if you go Hephaestus, you're still going to be able to push through this, no problem. Um, definitely, definitely Fortress already should be going up. Um, if, if you're going Artemis, because the follow up to the earthquake is Heliopoli. So, like, always, always when you go into the Mythic Age, throw down a fortress uh, as Greek is super important. And especially if your opponent has grabbed a Ford Townsend, you can just put the fortress here straight onto the front and just enjoy life. You see an archery range here. Where's the fortress? No fortress. You're getting yourself fortified town centers. And you can see no fortress here because you've got um, Toxodes. And, yeah, they're, they're nice. They look good. But Heliopolis are what you need. There's the fortress. There's the fortress, it's good, but you're not going to be able to afford those Heliopolis. And uh, I could say a little bit about this. I think it's a little bit unlucky. I don't know if he actually, if he actually really spotted this. You're going to Earthquake? Oh, you Earthquake. Oh. This one. It's a bit risky. I mean, I, I don't hate it because you got these Toxody raids coming in. And you do manage to get this up. You can keep the if you can keep the fortress up, that's huge. The chimera is going to help out a ton. I I don't think you have masons yet, do you? Yeah. Okay. So I mean, this is why this is why I, 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 I yeah, it's a bit unlucky. It's a bit unlucky. I think I think for the most part, you do need to you do need to make sure you have a safe fortress. Um. In this in this matchup because it's so important for this push right now. Look at the resources you have. You had if you had two, if you had two or two or three Heliopoli right now, or one Heliopoli right now coming in two, you just win this fight so hard, and you just take the talent center down and you just win. These Toxody raids are doing a lot. Um, they are actually doing a lot, but yeah, losing these Toxodies for this raid into Heliopolis would be. Pretty cool. Didn't I tell us Peltast? Yeah, I, I didn't say anything about Peltast. Heliopolis? What are you talking about? Deadly Cookie? You're crazy, man. Yeah, right right now, right now you're just like everything is like okay, yeah. hang on. Go on with upgrades. Um Okay, so this is fine. This is fine. Should you've got enough food, so I, I can I can excuse not getting flood control. Um, Carpenters is pretty good. Uh, if you could get up to quarry here, it'd be pretty good. But honestly, at this point, it doesn't really matter. You need to push through here, or you need to sneak in here. Uh, there's a world where putting pressure on on uh, on this town center and sneaking this town center here is okay, or or maybe throwing up some buildings elsewhere. I'd love to see a Ford Fortress here. And then be able to push in. Uh, walling off all over here at this point is 100% uh, what these villagers should be doing. 
If you can get walls over here, well, what's the actual scouting situation? Yeah, controlling this corner is everything because you're putting all the pressure over here. If you win this fight, then you get control of this corner. And if you already have control of this corner, that's essentially GG and you 100% win the game. If you just win this town center, then you, then you have to set up the trade route in the corner. And it's like, you're kind of you're not guaranteeing a win here. Um, okay, so Bellerophon is going to be tough to defeat if you don't have any melee units. You do have a couple of Hades Shades, uh, but definitely need to have something not named Toxody to take them down for the most part. Lamentov, very, very aggressive here on this gold mine. <laughs> right, so it's like you've got all the advantage here. It's just... Honestly, I, I don't know how much I need more I need to watch this um watch this recorder game because the thing that you're missing is simply just that safe that safe fortress. Where's that underworld? It's a interesting one. Yeah, the thing you're missing here is literally just that safe fortress. Uh, as soon as you hit the mythic age, Heliopolis. That's it. Honestly, and you would have won this game. And you would have won this game. And it would it wouldn't it would have been it would have been uh brutal. Uh, you can forget literally everything else I've said, all the other stuff, small, doesn't matter. It, it matters a little bit, it matters to me. But the big thing is literally just Heliopolis. Uh, and you're currently gold styled, which is sad, and you get another fortress up, which is fine. Um, but yeah, now you can't even afford the, the Heliopolis. Um, not sure what else to say about in this game at this point. Because uh, you're going to be four town centers to two town centers, and that's that's it. Um, good to get... Uh, Carpenters doesn't matter that much. I mean, you need, the, you need the wood, so it's fine. And now you get the Heliopolis. Now we can move forward. And you can see how much damage you do. And you just win. You just win. Okay, so... Alright, so... Let's just let's just forget that we possibly could have been in this position about five minutes earlier, and we'll just say that Lermontov. We, this is where we're in. This is the position we're in. Where to now? Get this town center. Where to after getting this town center? Do we actually get the town center or no? We'll pause when we get the town center, and we will look at Ragnarok's perspective. Okay, so. We've now stabilized. We're three town centers versus three town centers. Lermontov doesn't have his third town center yet, but we're three town centers versus three town centers. The obvious move here is to attack this location. That's the obvious move. It's going to win if you got the advantage most of the time. While we are m making this move and pushing through here, what else do we need to do? First things first, well, obviously you have to kill this fortress off because it's annoying. First things first, we can see this here. We need a wall here. This here gives us so much control of our corner. It is ridiculous. So this wall here, beautiful. If we come down the bottom, these villages here, we need to fix this up. We need to make sure he can't get in here and we can start expanding through all of these trees. There's a, there's a weird late game technique you can do on certain maps like tundra where you just basically put a wall between every single tree line and this is late game late game sh shit that is very very strong with norse for example because they can run all sarks all around and get all this stuff done and it can be very frustrating to play against but if you just start getting walls done here forest to the water water to the to the uh to the tundra tree over here, we get the walls. You just put walls up everywhere. Uh, you don't quite have the gold income to do that, but that's because we don't have a quarry yet uh, and we don't have a trade route. But let's see what uh, Ragnarok does here. He's actually currently in a bit of a winning position, I'd say. So he does manage to take this down. I have to be careful against the uh, villagers. And he's going to be retreating away and we'll see which way he wants to go in. 160 of 160 population. All right, so... Uh, yeah... For the most part, you want to keep your army together and just push, I think. Uh, if you're splitting your army up here with the Greek, you're kind of making mistakes, in my opinion. You want to be splitting up villages and forcing all the enemy units to be in one place uh, and then dealing with, with the stuff that you have to deal with if you have to deal with it. If you try to do something different. 
So you can see these Peltas coming out. They're great. But what happens if you were to just make nothing but Heliopolis now? If I go right now into Heliopolis Hoplite, instead of Archers, I, I, I just straight win. I've got, how many Fortress do I have? Two Fortress. So two Fortress, Heliopolite Hoplite, there is nothing he can do to stop that at this point. I am, you're too far in front for him to stop that. But continuing to make Toxodes at this point, it's not going to cut it without towers up. So you need to get, you need to just basically stop making these Toxodes. Another thing is, if, it's not happening exactly here, but if you are in a fight where you got Toxodes Hoplites uh, and fighting, what no normally happens is the Toxodes live, the Hoplites all die, the Toxodes run away. And then say you had eight and eight, and then what ends up happening is in the next fight you've got um, you've got like twelve and four, so twelve Toxodes, four Hoplites, and it just gets more and more Toxodes. So you can actually cancel the, the you can actually cancel Toxodes quite a bit uh, or Archers quite a bit. Put them on a control group for if you need to rebuild them and like and and have and and just like make sure you uh, oops make sure you you do you do this. And you just make sure that when you see your Toxody numbers go down, then you hit two, and then you hit Toxody, uh, or whatever control group you put them on, and, and then you're gonna be able to keep the Toxodies at a, a healthy number if you're gonna be building them. But and now you can see those Heliopolis coming in. Uh, and you can't stop anything here. Still no walls over here means he can get in and be a pain in the butt. And he's actually walled off over here and he's completely safe. So you've still got the advantage, you should still be able to push in and win this. Uh, it's a lot of population to have to devote up here. Um, especially a pass pissed against and a, and a Toxodi. Just get a Gastrofiti here. Honestly, just get a Gastrofiti. One one a pass pissed, one Gastrofiti. Don't be afraid. Gastrofiti, very strong. Takes down buildings very quickly. Um so if, you, if he's pushing you this way, you can just leave and you can just go around and take his town center down. Yeah, I, don't have a, I don't have a whole lot to say right now because the funny thing about the Greek mirror is that the upgrade advantage that you have, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the Heliopolis, they don't get upgrades. So even if, like, at this point, the score difference is 2,000 score different, right? But both players here, both play, except, well, I'm living talk doesn't have any wood, but both players at this situation are equal. We are both equal. So there's, there's literally no advantage to be had here in this game. Uh, at this point, in terms of like, even if you got the score advantage, and the score advantage here is going to be resources, right? Oops. Yeah, resources. So you have this many more resources than your opponent, but you're equal. Doesn't matter. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and then, so considering you now know that you're equal here, and this is something you can work out in a game, like like if you're playing a game, you can work out if you're equal or behind by not looking at the score, but by simply like, okay, do they have champion? Do they have fully upgrade? Okay, he's got both of those. I have both of those, we're equal. So at this point, we're late game. So we need less villages. We need a trade route uh, and everything else. We don't need to have like a hundred villages at this point because you've got full upgrades. You don't need anything more. So you can take villages off, send them forward and start building towers, building side builds. If you look at the civilian count here, uh, he, like Lermontov here, he's got too many villages. You've got too many villages. Both of you, too many villages right now. So you can very, very happily take villages off and just spam buildings everywhere. So you can go down, I think Greek, you can go down to about 80 villages, maybe even 70 villages gathering. And that includes car cam camel caravans or donkey caravans uh, in the late game. So you can easily take those off and get some, um, get some value done with some buildings everywhere. Um, I love the Gastrofiti. You gotta be really careful with these. These guys are these guys are cheeky. They, they can take down a town center, but 
Um, be careful you don't get pushed with them. If you're not set up here with enough stuff, like walls, towers, everything else, then it's going to be tough to hold a side push. So if you ever watch uh, the greats play late game, they're going to spam palace here, fortress here, Migdol here, and then they're going to go for this push as well behind that if they feel like they can't push here anymore. And you can see this is what Lermontov's doing. He's all Lermontov is doing right now, which you're not, is moving forward and building towers. And this isn't this isn't like this is this isn't even like great late game play. Like this is just one thing that is going to give him a better position than than you have. So yeah, honestly, no towers thus far. You're not using Hades late game benefit at all. Uh, another thing you can do is like if you check the map out, you can see you've seen all these walls here. Send a villager forward. Wall here. Wall here, wall over here, uh, and uh, and then you can be strangling your opponent a little bit as well. Uh, but I can I can see. Okay, now we're getting walls coming up. Uh, maybe. Uh, well, you don't have that many villagers gathering anymore, so maybe you've kind of done the the villager culling situation. But maybe not enough trade caravans. Yucky, yucky. Oh, he's fixing it. No, he's not. Uh, it sucks. It's uh, you had a good market, but it got it got taken out. I think it doesn't matter all too much. But you do definitely do need more camel uh, ox donkey caravans if uh, if you're going to be doing this. And and yeah, this this happens a lot. Um, this happens a lot in the like I would say 1800 to 1850 late game. This kind of thing. Um, happens quite a lot in that both players just spam into one area and, and it's a bit of a stalemate. Uh, and then the games can last a, a really long time. Uh, if you watch any of the really strong late game players play, well, Lermontov's actually kind of doing it here, but they're using their villagers to push in to their opponent here consistently. And they are always building more villagers. You don't need 13 villagers on favor either, but um, they're always putting buildings up everywhere on the map while these fights are going on or, or even not taking these fights and going elsewhere yeah now he's set up here and there's like there's next to nothing you can do if your opponent sets up this close to you with guard towers. You can make, um, maybe make gas graffiti here instead of the Toxodes, and you could maybe hold this. Because you could take all the towers down very quickly. And your town center actually lives. Because gas graffiti's actually trade all right against the Toxodes, but it's mostly just to kill the towers. You could be you could be trying to take these four to five walls down. We see a bunch of idle units from Lamentov though. Just predicting that because he realizes this is very much an advantage. Yeah. Yeah. So things things to kind of just remember. So the big big ones in terms of like the early game was um just plow checking that what you have to do to get that happening, house villages, uh, not going to 130 population, uh, deciding whether or not to make units or not. I mean, I can see that you were made units because you had a Ford gold mine, but you could see that the units don't start coming until about seven minutes, 7.30, and then you get cursed, and then you curse the army, and they can't do anything. And you can even just get watchtowers as well, and you would have been fine. Um, getting your forward hunt against Athena, as soon as you see that, walk forward to get your hunt, uh, and it would have been great. Other things were probably a safe fortress is pretty pretty uh, imperative for uh, for the mythic age. So you can make Heliopolis straight away to get this town center down. And if you did kill that town center, you would have immediately been able to push this one. There's no way he would have been able to survive there. Uh, and then late game, just set walls up. Don't let your opponent in here. Did you get yourself signal flares? Yeah, get this upgrade. Signal fires. Get it. Look at this. See how you can't see this? See how you can't see? You would have seen it. You would have seen it. You would not. You would not have been surprised uh, if you had signal fires. And then all of these buildings see a whole lot more as well. Signal fires is one of the most underrated late game upgrades in the game. So definitely get that. Anyways, 
I actually think I will upload this. Well, hi, YouTube guys. I will see you guys uh, in the next game. If you um, liked it, please let me know. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the follow button. Hit the comment button. Hit the like button. If you like this kind of video, let me know. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.